Hello, everyone. My name is Fiona McCool, and I'm your facilitator for today uh, for the Plea Connect sixth and final web lab. Uh, today, we, our topic is using online tools to help us assess our public legal education work. And uh, again, my name is Fiona McCool, and I'm from CLEO, Community Legal Education Ontario. So, uh, just wanted to remind you about the project partners that make Plea Connect possible. Our project partners are my, uh, CLEO, the organization I'm from, Courthouse Libraries, BC. Educaloa and Pavnet. So we are from across Canada, and we're delighted to be coming together to uh, to provide this project. And we're generously funded by the Law Foundation of Ontario and the Department of Justice Canada, Ministère de la Justice Canada, who have also allowed us to make this project available in English and French. So for every webinar uh, and web lab, of course, you also can watch archived recordings and participate in those uh, in French as well. So we're happy about that. Um, for those of you who have not registered or participated or recently visited the Plea Connect website, I encourage you to do so. Um, I find it really helpful. Uh, we are all, all of, all of us who do education or public legal education work in technology are kind of out roaming Google looking for answers. And it's nice to know that you have a smart bunch of people uh, who can answer your questions with their own experience. So I know I find that invaluable. And as the webinars and web labs uh, draw to a conclusion at this phase in the project, we're really going to be relying on that website as a place to continue our discussions and learning. So for those of you who haven't been with us all along, so to speak, uh, this is what we've covered so far. So the first one we ever did were on the challenges of creating and maintaining a bilingual website. Then we had a great webinar and web lab called Web Analytics That Matter for Your Plea Project. And that, I think, led us to the topic we're doing today. So that gave us a bit of an introduction to key performance indicators and how not to get stuck in the weeds when it comes to figuring out all the statistics that uh, what the internet provides us about our sites. Then we did one on plea for mobile users, which I found really, really helpful and inspired me to go explore a bunch of things. Uh, then we did one on delivering plea training using technology, where we talked about webinars and web labs and online courses. And then uh, the one in May was on writing for the web and search engine optimization which made my brain hurt. There's lots of great things I learned on that. And then, of course, on Tuesday, I facilitated one on using online tools to help us assess our plea work. And in that one, we covered uh, a bunch of things that hopefully today we can dig into and talk about in more detail. So in terms of what we covered in the webinar, uh, for those of you who haven't listened to the archive version or were not able to join us, we talked a little bit about key performance indicators just to kind of put all of this, all these tools in some kind of context. And we did a very brief introduction to Google Analytics. Hopefully today we can get into that in a little more detail, talking about how to use goals in Google Analytics to try to make those statistics be more manageable and help you figure out how, whether you're succeeding or not. Uh, we talked a little bit about online user testing, so ways to find out if your site is designed properly uh, over the Internet by using some testing tools and some testing services. And then we talked a little bit about the whole user experience survey, so uh, different tools that help you hear the voice of the customer or the user. And then we dabbled a tiny bit in social media evaluation, like how to measure and quantify your success or lack thereof uh, using Facebook and Twitter and other tools like that. So um, again, in terms of chatting and discussing today, uh, I hope that you will see, let me just uh, remind you, if you want to speak over the phone, uh, that you should make sure to look at the upper right-hand side and see your name. And there will be a, uh, uh, a picture of a little old-fashioned microphone that will indicate whether you're muted or not muted. So if you wish to speak over the phone, um, please let us know and remember to unmute yourself. Um, you can also send messages to me privately or to anyone privately uh, in the chat box, but we encourage you to send messages to everybody so we can all see what we're all recommending to one another. So again, as it says on that slide in front of you, um, if you want to just send a message to the host and panelists, uh, you can do that. If you want to send a message to everyone, don't use all attendees because then I won't see it and neither will the other panelists. So just send it to participants and then everybody can, uh, can see your question or comment. So oftentimes, as I said in the webinar, I'm not an expert on any or all of the things I covered, so I'm really relying on, on you guys to, uh, to help one another to figure out things that, uh, and to teach me things as well. So I hope you'll use that all participants thing. If you have a, you can use the Q&A, which is a little more formal. Uh, you know, you can go down to the bottom there and enter a question and stick it in, and then everybody can see that too. And those are all recorded and, and later archived as well. So it's great to use any one of those tools for us to share information. So um, in terms of what we covered the other day, again, please, at any time, uh, speak up and let us know what you'd like to talk about. But 
Uh, Nate from uh, LS Legal Services Society in BC did say he was interested in talking a little bit more about Google Analytics and looking at goals. Um, I'm interested in exploring events, uh, which is something I find much more complicated in Google Analytics to try to figure out. Um, and so uh, we did talk about Google Analytics, uh, and uh, the people on the webinar did indicate a range of interest in it, but I think mean, some people were more you know, Google Analytics ninjas, and other people were interested in, in uh, setting it up and seeing how it worked. I think it's a really well-used free tool and has a lot to offer. So perhaps we might want to uh, to take a look at that. Um, we also looked very briefly at heat maps, which are ways that uh, when you can record a user session on your website, you can see what they're clicking and how long it's taking them and where they're moving their mouse. And you get kind of these like blurry orange blobs that tell you the places they tend to put their mouse when they're on your site, which can be interesting and, and show you some problem areas. Um, yeah, certainly uh, Hubert and I mentioned, uh, Hubert from Educaloa, I mentioned how, in, how in incredibly helpful Google AdWords has been as a way to figure out keywords and compare how your website ranks to others. Um, so if you want to share anything today, if you want to show us your own Google Analytics set, set up and, and your own statistics or a project or tool that you used, um, please let us know at any time. You can open a separate browser and get it all ready to show, and then just ask us by chat and we will um, hand you the ball, so to speak, with move the little blue ball over to you, make you a panelist, and then boom, you can show us what you're doing on your, uh, on your website or on your desktop. Okay. We also talked a little bit about uh, online user testing. I'm not sure if there's interest in the group exploring that further, um, but there has been interest in talking today a little bit more about the voice of the user. So that's like user surveys that ask some, ask some questions. So I thought we could um, take a look at, um, maybe I can put, my, uh, put it out to you folks. Um, how many of you today on uh, this webinar um, do use some kind of user survey or um, some kind of tool that asks for people to provide uh, some kind of comment or feedback on your website. So um, if you might take a second there to uh, indicate what you'd use, if any, or if you do not, in fact, use anything, perhaps you could, you could set a, send a little chat into all participants, and that way we can get a sense of, of the group and what um, what various tools people are using. So uh, Nate uh, says that they use Fluid Survey. So I would uh, I would like to see that because he says he used to use 4Q, which is what I use, and um, and uh, we have another person saying that they don't currently use surveys on their site. I've, I've certainly used Survey Monkey in the past. Now I use 4Q. So perhaps um, would there be interest for folks to take a look at the uh, Eye Perceptions 4Q tool? I could show. Uh, Okay, so people are learning. Great, oh, interested in learning about that, so that's great. So what I could do is, uh, if it's okay with Nate, perhaps I could show him the tool that I use very quickly and uh, show everyone, of course, show all of you, the tool that I use, and then um, we could uh, take a look at this fluid survey thing and uh, we could compare notes and see uh, which one is of interest. Uh, Hubert, do you guys have, uh, oh, we don't currently use one, but we have used SurveyMonkey. Okay, so there's some background in this and, and there's some interest, so why don't we do that? I'm just going to go to the slide that I, uh, I'm just going to go through. While you do that, can I just mention something? Uh, if you want to, people, if you want to help uh, us in, in uh, participating, uh, there's also stuff in WebEx that you can use. You can raise your hands, as I've done. Oh, um, yes. You can use feedback, which is, uh, you'll see it's a small, um, I don't know how to describe that, that, that icon, but you'll see there's an icon where you click on it, you can say yes, no, too fast, too slow. Too fast could be used sometimes for Fiona. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry uh, applause, about that. Et cetera. So you, you can use... Uh, you can use that to also raise your hand if you want to speak, or, or um, and then we could pass the ball over to you. Thank you, Humbert. Thank you. It's nice to know all the extra tricks. So um, the eye perception tool used to be owned by 4Q, um, and it was bought out and or merged with eye perception. So if you could do any online shopping or go to any websites out in the universe and you've gone to you know Future Shop or Home Depot or something, you've probably seen a little box pop up before you can actually get to the site. And it looks a little bit like what you're seeing on your screen there. 
So welcome, your opinion is important to us. And you know, we can't do anything to customize this welcome page, um, but it just is pretty standard. And what we can do, meaning we, you, anyone who uses this tool, can set an invitation rate. And that means how many percentages of people that come to the site are going to see this. So you could put it at 100%, but it would be a little bit intrusive, I think, for people if your site is the kind of thing where people go for short durations quite often. So we currently, based on actually the uh, advice that they give based on how many visitors you have a month, we set the invitation rate to 20%. Um, so we get a few responses a day, and we and plan to leave it up for sort of six months each year, and we do benchmarking year to year. So we had this tool back when it was 4Q on the old uh, CleoNet site, which is a site that the site I now run, which is Your Legal Rights Replaced. So I I'm going to show, I can show you uh, sort of the dashboard and things, but what I think I will do just to make it perhaps a little bit more interesting, and I hope I'm bearing my soul by showing you uh, the negative comments and various things people might have about my site. I will say that our site ha had a higher task completion rate and a satisfaction score back when our audience were service providers and when we kind of launched to the entire province of Ontario and started, started using Google Ads and cast a wider net. Um, I will say that uh, you know the overall capacity that people had uh, to um, you know in terms of being able to complete their task uh, certainly went down. So we're looking at that. But the nice thing about this tool is instead of um, perhaps a more, I'm just going to show you the dashboard here. So can everybody see? Uh, you no longer see the PowerPoint. Can everybody see um, what now says I Perceptions Plus? And I'm going to yes. rely on Nate to tell me that people can, if people are chatting, because it's I, I do have the chat box, but I might miss the odd thing. So if if you guys have something to say and and I can't see it, I'm not trying to be rude. It's just a little tricky to to see the chat when you're trying to do a tour. But um, <clears throat> so this is what I Perceptions Plus look looks like. So I think there's a, a variety of different account levels. I mean, it's nice to tell people what things cost. So 4Q used to be free. I don't think there's a free tool version of this anymore. So I think we pay something like $15 a month. And I know that can be a lot, but you can certainly go up to a much higher monthly rate to get way more bells and whistles. So the more you pay, the more you can kind of customize everything. So the most uh, the nice thing about that tool as opposed to a traditional um, survey is the invasiveness of that box telling you that you have to say no to taking the survey I think does translate into a higher number of uh, of people taking it. So if you look at the history of these various uh, surveys we have, the one we have currently, which says online, we have 214, and that's been up, I think, since, uh, you know, for a month or so. But certainly in the past, we had, you know, 600 responses. And back when we were um, an earlier, you know, and so I, I do them at different increments in the year. So um, I just wanted to kind of show you uh, you know, uh, what you sort of get here. So the, the, the theory behind 4Q, and I'll be very interested to hear why Nate and others may have dropped this tool. It's not perfect, but the idea is if you, instead of just asking people, do you like the site, or what can we do to be better, it bases things on tasks. So um, if we were to, uh, so if I show you what I get here. So um, this is the one I have currently, and I can change the design, and I can, uh, get information or customize a little bit how I wish to collect the information, and then I can analyze it. So if we look at the design um, of my particular survey, and it, they help you. Um, they, they sort of provide it for you in advance, and what you're doing is you're, uh, you know, you're customizing it a tiny bit. So you don't have to be a programmer or a web designer to sort of set this up, and I'm neither of those things. You do have to, uh, at the very end, be able to take code that they spit at you. So they give you this gobbledygook in a, in, a, in a text editor, and you have to know how to put that somewhere on your site so that no matter what page they go to, they get an, a chance to take the survey. So if you yourself don't know how to get into the source code of your site, hopefully whoever designed it can, and it certainly shouldn't take them more than a few seconds. So depending on what kind of site you use, um, you could put that into sort of the general page template for the entire site. And if people have questions about that or that was not clear, um, you know, please let us know and we can show you kind of more of how that's done. So the first thing it, 
it isn't really a question. Uh, the first is the device. So what iPerceptions does is it can tell whether the people who are answering your survey came to you from a desktop or a tablet, like something like an iPad or whatever, or a mobile device. And that does help you to understand um, where your users come from, and it does affect uh, you know, their capacity to use certain parts of the site. So everyone who answers mine comes from a desktop. Um, you know, I don't think people who are on a phone are going to take time to answer surveys. I know I wouldn't. <laughs> so uh, then it tells you the source. And again, that tells you whether they came from a website or social media or a link or an email campaign or something like that. But the most important questions, and you can't control them, because I think the idea is sort of a consistent set of questions that you get from website to website. So if we all used tools that were task-based like this, and we tried to have sort of consistency across how we gave people surveys, we might better be able to benchmark and compare. So the first question that all four Q surveys ask is, how would you rate your overall experience from very bad to outstanding, as you can see? And then the next thing is, which of the following best describes the primary purpose of your visit? So these are questions that you customize. So um, in my case, I've said access legal information, access news or media, learn about a webinar, or get legal help and support and other. So for me, I'm able then to, to look at, and I'll show you this in a minute, I'm able to look at to what degree they were able to complete their purpose and uh, by their task. So the people who are looking for news find it 100% of the time. They get an email from me with the latest news or whatever. They click, they get the information. It's sort of a no-brainer. Um, with accessing legal information, which is so complicated, and it's you know they come in with very specific questions, and do they get the answer really, really quickly? Uh, no, um, it's, that's very complex. So their level generally of, of satisfaction is a little bit lower. And then when they're looking for legal help and support, like what number to call, it goes down even lower. So for me, that constantly tells me areas I've got to improve, but I also have to adjust my expectations based on the uh, quality of information that I could even find for people because sadly, as we all know, there's not enough help out there. So um, I like the fact that it's based in tasks. So if you have a site that has a registration page for events, that might be one kind of purpose. Another one might be uh, you know, reading articles. Another one might be um, you know, you, uh, going to a discussion forum. So again, you have an opportunity to craft those yourself, and as you can see with that little icon, you can edit that. So every 4Q survey always says, were you able to complete yes or no? So you get a percentage all the time on task completion, which is different than um, rating your own happiness or experience. So I think that's an interesting distinction. So were you able to um, were you able to do complete your purpose, and were you, how would you rate it? And then it asks you what you value most about the site. And that's really nice because you get lots of great quotes that you can put in your funding applications. Um, and sometimes it surprises you what people value about your site. Um, and then it tells you why you were not able. Now this last one uh, is difficult for me just because people get into huge detail about their, situ their legal situation. And it's sort of anonymous, so I can't really help them. Um, but it does tell me the kinds of things that they couldn't do. And that oftentimes makes me make adjustments to how I describe things or how I might design things. And it tells me that I should add new content in particular areas. And then these additional questions, I think eight, nine, um, are only available for people who pay a monthly fee. They're like pro uh, features. So the next one is following today's visit, what will most likely be your next step? Um, I would love feedback on whether these are the right questions, but for me, I'm trying to figure out if my audience are general public people or people helping their clients, um, if they're legal system advocates or they're uh, people who are just looking out in the uh, wilderness for legal information. So I try and get at that by asking whether they're there, they're planning on educating themselves or a friend or family member with what they found or whether they're going to use the information to help clients or whether they're going to contact an organization uh, for follow-up or uh, other, please specify. And finally, just are you going to recommend it, yes or no? So those are the questions. Um, and then uh, if I just go back to my projects, I'll show you kind of the cool part, in my opinion. Uh, what I find helpful is that analyze piece. So it gives you lots of visual clues and data uh, as to how people have used your site on a daily basis. Um, so I guess if we go, I don't know, year to date, 
I don't have a huge amount of responses, but you can kind of uh, look at it over time. So you can see I used to have like an 80-something task completion rate and an 80-something satisfaction rate, and now it's much lower. And I have to figure that out, right? That's the great thing about evaluation. You have to figure out why these things are going up and down. But generally, um, it also, if you have a whole bunch of different things you do on your website, this tells you, uh, you know, um, how many of the people who take your survey are doing the various things that you, uh, that, that the various purposes of your site. So uh, most of the people who take this survey um, access legal information rather than accessing news or something else. And that correlates to my Google Analytics, which tells me that people are looking at my resources more than they are looking at news or something else. So it's nice to see these aligned here for me. But it also allows me to, if I go um, a little further here, um, it lets me see uh, you know, more statistics about them, uh, where they come from, and that kind of thing. So if we go, again, we go to year to date uh, of the, you can sort of see how many times it's been served and the number of times it's been clicked and how many times it's been completed. Those are of less interest to me, um, but I'm just showing it to you. Um, so you can base their task completion by the, the type of visit they had. So the percentage of people, for example, who um, who were able to complete their task on based on the particular kind of thing they were doing on your site can be very interesting. And then uh, I find this one the most helpful because it gives me nice, easy graphs. So it tells me how many people came from a desktop and where they came from um, and their overall experience. And uh, you can see most of the people come for our site come in the good and very good range. We have a couple of very bads, but not too many of those. And I can put that all together. And then again, it breaks down their use of the site. And it breaks down uh, whether they were able to complete that task. And finally, it lets me look. Um, sorry, I'm just going to. Uh, it, normally, this is showing just today. But it tells me. Um, you know, what, whether they're likely to recommend it and so on. So finally, the text mining is helpful because it tells me what people value most and what they couldn't do on the site. And it shows me, it doesn't show me who they are, but it shows me um, on a daily basis what they value. Um, and here, you know, I want to know more about increasing the maximum for Henson Trusts. You know, so that's something really specific uh, that they were looking for on the site. Um, so I can go back and, and sort out uh, perhaps where if that information is on my site, I could go and do a special you know, Google AdWord about that, or I could make that a featured comment question or something. So that's an example of what I'm getting out of it. This last thing, which is benchmarks, is of less interest to me uh, because it compares me to other industries, um, other nonprofits. Which, you know, that's such an amorphous, gigantic uh, kind of bucket that I don't know how helpful that is. But that's an example of, uh, I'm just going to go back to, uh, to our PowerPoint there. So that's an example of kind of how 4Q works. So um, what you do is you set up your account there, you set up your survey, you can have as many as you want, and then you stick your code in the page and set your invitation rate. And then when, you're, when you want to take a break or give people a break, you can just click the offline. So, you know, hopefully the things that I'm not crazy about with um, uh, with 4Q are the fact that I can't customize my thank you page and I can't, you know, I can't, there's only so much I can do without paying more and it's more expensive than it used to be. And of course the other thing is that, again, people keep anonymously telling me what they wish they'd found and I can't help them. So I wish there was some way right inside that question to somehow send them to my feedback page to follow up with me or something. Um, I, my understanding with LSS, and I'll let Nate take it from here, but I think they did something where they sort of uh, asked a question if people were willing to be contacted for more in-depth interviews and follow-up, which is a great idea that I never thought of. So there's other things that you can do um, you know, so that you maybe can drill down a little bit um, to find out, you know, what what you could do to improve. So, does anyone have any questions or uh, about that particular site survey and kind of how it works, um, or any comments if they've used it or if they've been to websites that use them um, and things they did or did not like about them? <laughs> I, and again, I would oh. actually, uh, Fiona, I I um I've never used that one specifically, but I noticed up top at some point that there was a. Uh, you could choose a language. Do you know if it's available in French also? Oh, well, that's an excellent question. For, uh, and forgive me for not knowing the answer. Um, let me, I could go back and poke around while, uh, look, or I could just, 
I guess I could just look at it right now. Okay, so it does, let me it see does my a lot price. more than the one we used to use, I think. So That's a good question. So, I mean, you know, I think it's a big American company. So, I mean, you know, it might it might not be. And I'm just going to say create new project and see what the choices are here. Um, yeah, and they uh, they also claim that they have different types of things now. They have evaluate task completion. They have um, also something called a comment card. So they have languages here, and yes, they according to this, they have default languages: English, French, Spanish, Portuguese, Chinese, both simplified, traditional, Japanese, Korean, French, uh, in brackets, Canada, which is interesting. Yay. So they actually seem to have localized French to our country, which is neat. Italian, Norwegian, Dutch, Danish, Swedish, Spanish, and then they, again they in bracket Latin America, which is interesting. Uh, Polish, Finnish, and Czech. So I can't, uh, I can't uh, verify um, with the kind of skill, of course, you have, Hubert, how how good the translations are or how good the interface is, but it does seem like a multilingual thing. So I imagine you would create for your site like two versions, which would be coded on your French or English. That's right. So, you know, I'd be interested uh, to find out how those work. Um, but again, I think we, yeah, we think we pay $15 a month, and it used to be free, but for me it's really helpful. Now, the one thing that I thought was kind of cool, they have this new feature where you can have a comment card, and it's like this cute little orange triangle in the corner of every page of your site that floats there that says feedback, and a nice little comment card comes up. And it might help someone feel in that moment that they might be willing to just say, you know, this link was dead, or you know, I, I, this isn't what I thought it was. Um, but that you have to pay a quite significant amount of month monthly fee to get. And I think there's easier tools out there when you just want people to quickly give you feedback. But um, I was kind of going to put Nate on the spot from uh, <laughs> from LSS to tell us a little bit about this uh, tool. That let me just go back on the chat that he said fluid survey. So um, if it's okay with you, Nate. I'm going to hand the ball over to you so you could tell us about that, and maybe I'll be canceling my uh, my 4Q uh, subscription when I see all the cool things they do out in BC. Uh, so uh, over to you, Nate. Sure. Let me just see if I can get it up on the screen here. Uh, yeah, so we uh, used to use uh, 4Q or eye perception uh, up until April, um, can you see my screen here? Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is what it looks like right now. Um, but, uh, and, and I mean, this problem may be kind of specific to us and specific to BC, but because of the way Legal Service Society was created, uh, we're under a certain legislation which makes us have to follow uh, very strictly the BC Privacy Commissioner's rulings. And a few months ago, there was concerns brought up about uh, data centers and where all these survey places uh, 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 and other yeah. services are storing the information and kind of the safest route um, for us going by the the recommendations from the Privacy Commissioner was to make sure that everything was stored in Canada um, and Fluid Surveys is a Canadian company, all their servers are in Canada. Um, so we were a bit 50-50 on whether we needed to move away from uh, eye perceptions or whether, you know, it was fine and we decided since we were moving kind of uh, all our survey stuff over to uh, Fluid Survey anyways, we'd do our web surveys with them too uh, mm. and save a, bit, save a bit of money that way rather than paying for two services. Uh, as far as the differences go, uh, functionally, it's very similar. Uh, I'll show you. This is a list of our surveys here, and this is one we run on our uh, family law website. Uh, to actually create them, I find it's a bit easier than in the our perceptions. It's just kind of drag and drop. You type a question and you fill it in. Mm. Um, so I just saw from Hubert there. I don't know if it works in French uh, language. The only language pulling down here is English. Um, I'm not sure. I've never had to, never tried to make one in French. Um, but that's something we can definitely look at. Uh, I think one thing where the eye perception is better 
for sure is in the uh, analytics that they provide just on the site. Um, if you're doing the same questions, it all collects the same information. But um, Fluid Surveys does not present it as nicely and doesn't do a lot of that kind of um, cross tabulation that's built into uh, to the eye perception. So it's there, but you have to to do it yourself. And these are just some of our results from I think the last two months or so. Um, they also don't have uh, the same kind of standardized questions as uh, eye perception does. It allows a lot more um, customization, which is good uh, in that you have the option to customize it uh, as much as you want. But um, it also makes you put a lot more thought into the type of questions you're asking and you may be asking the wrong questions. So I know we've been doing tweaking as we go along. Uh, so yeah, you can just see, basically, they give you everything in just your very basic bar chart form. When you have questions with text boxes, you can go through and uh, get all the, uh, the text answers as well. Um, I believe there's a free plan for fluid survey, I just saw a question there. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually pay, I think it's like 18 or $19 a month, um, just because the we use it on two different websites that get quite a bit of traffic and we wanna make sure we're capturing as much as possible. Um, the way the plans for fluid survey works, if I'm remembering correctly, because it's been a while since I looked at the, the different pricing models, was that they stop collecting after a certain uh, number of responses. So I believe you get all the options for creating the surveys, but um, I think they cut off at like 250 at the free or so. So if you want to get more than 250 responses across uh, all your surveys, um, you need to start paying. Uh, and we do two web surveys and then, uh, you know, at any given time we might be sending out one or two to kind of specific groups. So we wanted to make sure that we were catching uh, as many people as possible. And Nate, did you say when you said it sort of would cut off the free account at 250 or something like that, I'm not gonna hold you to it because we can look this up, but do you know if that's a month or does that mean over the life of the survey or? Uh, a you... month. Okay, and the I other thing I see, oh, well that's, yeah, so 250 a month, I don't know, I, maybe I'm admitting small numbers here, but I think for a lot of nonprofits that seems like Plenty, I, you know, it's that's it's hard to get more than that in a month. Um, yeah, it, it's um, we don't usually get more than, and again, we run it on two websites. Uh, we usually don't get more than about 150 or so, but mm -hmm. you know, we want it to be safe. Um, sure. And I know in the past, looking at our our 4Q stuff in the past, um, at one point, I know we were getting uh, a couple hundred in the yeah. course of a month. Uh, we don't anymore. I mm -hmm. honestly have no idea how we got that many to start off with. <laughs> Back when people uh -huh. were asked to fill in fewer surveys, they probably agreed to fill in surveys more often because I think everybody's sort of uh, uh, putting this stuff in front of them. Do you know if Fluid Survey also does that similar kind of modal window thing where there's like this little invitation that floats up or is it a link they have to yeah. click? Yeah, it does the uh, exact same way. It does the little uh, pop-up window Oh, when you cool. come onto the site, uh, and you can set how often it pops up for people. Uh, oh, great. Same way as in eye perceptions. If you had seen, um, if anyone's familiar with uh, when ClickLaw did theirs, um, probably about a year ago or so now, that's uh, the same same as theirs. And uh, another nice feature is it actually lets you import um, your old survey results from uh, eye perceptions. Oh, cool. Uh, which is nice too, so you don't have to. Uh, you don't have to worry about downloading all of that stuff from from eye perception before you switch over to make sure you can go back and look. Yeah, that's a really great tool. I noticed that you, um, on the tab there next to surveys, there's something called polls, which is cool because we were, uh, one of the tool things that I mentioned in my webinar very quickly, and we didn't get into the detail, was polls. Of course, we all know the difference between those two things, but um, for some of the things I want to know, really, I could get in a poll, um, and I, mm -hmm. that whole, are you this kind of person, or are you that, you know, questions like that. Um, 
so I was wondering if if, if you've used it for polls, or, or okay, I guess the answer is sort of right there. That yeah, you can, you can see uh, I have not. No. <laughs> okay, but uh, has anyone ever used? Oh, an example of a poll versus survey question. Well, that's a good question, and, and I don't want to be the only one to answer it. But um, the kind of poll that I've used in the past was asking the question of audience, because for me. I was making a shift from a site with my audience that was supposed to be service providers, but because it was out on the Internet, I was getting the feeling uh, that more and more of the general public were using the site, and I wanted to get at that somehow. So my question was, are you uh, using the information on this site to help yourself, a friend, or a family member, or are you using it um, in your work with clients to assist them or other? And uh, that's not traditional poll in the sense that you're not asking people to vote on something, but certainly it told me, um, you know, very. It, most people had a really high click-through rate because it doesn't take long for someone to identify the answer, and it would tell me right away uh, that I had, you know, more than 50% of my users were not service providers even though that was supposed to be my audience, so it helped confirm for me, um, you know, that, uh, it, yeah, it helped to confirm for me that you know, th that I needed to make a shift to meet the needs of that audience. Now, that might not have been the best way to word it, but I can think of other polls, true and false. Some people do true and false things as a little user engagement thing. So if you have a, a, a website on tenant information, you can do a little myth, true-false type thing, where you can sort of say, uh, in Ontario, a tenant cannot be evicted in the, in the winter months. Is this true or false? And a lot of people think that's true, but it's in fact false. So you can use that as a way to engage users. I think the problem with some of these poll tools, and I posted something about this on the Plea Connect site, they don't give you a chance to give a, a long, long answer and provide help. So they're not the, I don't find a poll to be the best way to, to do a quiz. So I guess I'm making a distinction between a survey, a poll, and a quiz. <laughs> um, but uh, I'd love to hear from other people on that. Uh, Teresa asked the question about the cost of the product. So. Um, I think uh, if you're talking about the eye perceptions thing, they have, again, they're, they're what's called grandfathering or whatever, the people who used to have the free tool. But I think if you're just starting out, I think you're looking at a 15 or 30 or $50 a month type thing. Um, and it sounds like that's a comparable cost, maybe a little cheaper for the fluid survey tool that um, they yeah, used. I'm, yeah, I'm just looking at the fluid survey now. And there's a free, there's kind of like a limited free version uh, then 17 bucks a month, 50 bucks a month, and then they have their "You're so big, we need to uh, sort this out ourselves." One, two. So I don't think anyone would really be using that one. And uh, okay, that's great to know. And Hubert has a mention that he'd like to show people something that he pointed out to me that I then. This is the cool thing about Plea Connect. So when someone recommends a tool, I always go, "Oh, cool!" and then I go sign up. So. Uh, Hubert wanted to show us Poll Everywhere, which is a cool tool for doing polling. Um, so what I'm going to do, if it's okay with Hubert, I'm going to give you the ball, and you can show us how that works. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, let me share my... And just that. This is a Poll Everywhere. It's a tool that we use in events, actually. So it's an online tool that we use to uh, in events, uh, but you could do it at any time, really. We're, uh, can you see right now the, the website? Yep, instant audience feedback, it says. There you go, exactly. So uh, you can create a poll, and people can answer either by texting your, uh, their answer or by tweeting, or they can go and visit the, web, the, the site on their mobile or if they have their laptop with them. So. We'll just uh, let's do an example right now. Uh, you can create a poll. So, what's your? Uh, I don't know. Is this your first? Whoops! Can't type. <laughs> first uh, uh, webinar. Well, no. The Connect event, I should say. Event. And uh, whoops. Um, so we'll have multiple choice. We'll say yes. We'll say no. And that's it. And uh, we just create it. And you'll see. So either you can uh, text a code, or you can you, submit your responses at poll.ev.com. 
and um, and basically uh, let me. And how do they know? I wonder how they know at pollev.com which one. I guess I'm going to, uh, to find out because I'm going to try and do that right now. Because your code is is um, your code is unique. So no matter where you so to text you text it at seven eight zero. Yeah, no, I mean I figure that, but I'm like, how does it know which? I guess it's about to tell me. How does it know which thing? Uh, how does it, how does pollev.com know which thing is which? But we'll see. I'm trying to do it on my phone, but maybe I should do it from uh, another browser and try this out. Because I'm wondering about this. This would be fun if you were doing a workshop on your website and you wanted to, um, I mean, that idea of doing it with myths, right? So you want to ask youth if it's true that... Um, oh, I see. Okay, so I'm... Okay, I'm going to now respond and see what happens. So has anyone yeah. had a ch oh no single letters won't work. So what did I do wrong here? Okay. Single letters only work after you've entered a presenter or session keyword. Mm, uh, okay. actually you're supposed to just um what uh, did I do? The, the code that you see either the yes code which is 193779 oh. or the no code which is 194066. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not paying attention. I thought those were votes or something. Never mind. Okay, sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> Isn't We're it great when the facilitator can't actually follow basic instructions? Um, okay, sorry. So the answer is, is this your first one? So I'm going to go no. So I'm going to type that in and see if I can change the voting answer there. <laughs> but I mean, I think the applications for this would be that idea that you're uh, you're at an event and you are... Um, that's exactly what we're going to be doing. And what you can do is create them in advance. Obviously, I could have done that initially. And, oh, a few more people. Um, yeah, that was me. I finally figured it out. So. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see how people can respond on the right. Uh, you could use text message, uh, web devices on, on, on poll.ev. Or uh, you can even add the tweets, which I was just, um, I just added now. So people could have tweeted at poll and then enter the code, you see? The code being those uh, those red numbers right now. That you can is out really cool. You can use the, the, the slide that uh, it, it downloads this page into your slides, and as people answer, it'll update on your PowerPoint slide, which is super cool, as long as you're connected to the Internet, obviously, uh, when you present. And, uh, and you can stop the poll at one point, and uh, no, it's really... It's see it's um uh, it's when you're at an event you're using this technology to do to do um to measure your impact at the at the at the immediate moment so it's uh it's another way of using technology in events actually um, yeah and I think more and more like I I don't know about other people but more and more when you go to conferences you know they're trying to I mean a lot of us have our little devices and our gadgets and we're looking at them anyway so they're telling yeah. us to live tweet things they're telling us to uh you know they're t throwing the names of websites at us constantly and uh, this way you know it's an in it's asking them to engage uh, in a way that, you know, they can actually see the impact. So there's a funny little promotional video on the homepage for this poll everywhere where this actor guy is sort of doing a lecture in his room. It's, it's like a traditional academic lecture format. And he's saying, am I a dynamic speaker, a boring speaker? or a, And then he's, all the students are using their phones to vote that he's a terrible speaker. It's a sort of a cute little promotional video, but it does give you a good demonstration of the tool. And I haven't exactly thought, there it is, and I haven't... Uh, I haven't actually thought of how to use it best except at an in-person conference. But that's a that's a great example. So if you were, uh, I guess, again, giving a workshop to a bunch of different people and you wanted to know which sector they work in and you imagine they were from violence against women sector or they were uh, from legal clinics or whatever, you might be able to ask a question about that or you could try and gauge um, what people want to know about. So. So again, that sounds like a really cool tool. I'm still looking for a tool, maybe you guys. Oh, Poll Everywhere Free. Yeah, so that tool, as far as I know, um, Hubert, when I've tried to use it, it's free. It's free, but depend you're limited the amount of people that answer. And uh, see, we're going to be using it with, with um, what would be the expression in English. We're doing a conference with judges in in, uh, in October with the um, the, I guess, Judicial Magistr uh, Ju Judicial Institute of Quebec, and um, so they're going to be like 500, and we're we're going to be 
uh, asking many polls, and we noticed that, that we weren't going to have to pay for that event because there's a, a certain limit of uh, of answers. I see. Okay. So the, the one of the things that I'm looking for, maybe you smart people can think of something, because I, I looked at this, but it wasn't quite right, and I looked at surveys, and it wasn't quite right. And so what I am wish I could do somehow is something like a quiz. Now, I know that um, Click Law does this thing called Legal Jeopardy, which is uh, a free kind of fun web-based tool. It's a little old-fashioned looking in terms of look and feel, but it works great. And it's like this little free, if you Google Legal Jeopardy game, you can find it, and it's free. Um, or I think it's some incredibly like one-time cost of five dollars for your entire life or something. It's very cheap, but um, it lets you create like a game of Jeopardy. Uh, and if you've ever played that game, the, your answer is in the form of a question or whatever. So you can kind of create a whole bunch of true and false things, and then you can click to the answer. And I know Brenda, who wasn't able to join us today, she um, it's oh it's actually done in a kind of online PowerPoint format. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, you would have a question up there, like that question example I gave about tenants being evicted in the winter. And then people, you would be standing in front of people, and you would say, true or false? And people would say, true. And then I would click, and it would show false. And then I could then show people how to go and find that on the website. So I think those two kinds of tools are great for in-person events to kind of make them more exciting. Um, but I wish I could find a good tool that did quizzes uh, in Drupal, which is the content management system I use for my site. I wish I could find a really good quiz module that works really well um, so that when you were on a page, you know, you could get a little true and false and then you'd get the answer. So I, I wish I could find something like that. So if anyone has experience with those kinds of quizzes, that might be fun. You know, something that's really easy to, you know, to type in the question and do multiple choice and kind of give people the answer because I think uh, with legal information and plea, games can be really, really effective. And I've seen lots of great in-person things, and I think that poll tool is, would be a really fun exercise if you know your audience and you know they've got gadgets in their hands or they're at computer labs. That might be a really fun, uh, a fun tool to use. And I think the legal jeopardy thing is really fun. I just am, haven't been able to find an easy thing that works online with sort of anonymous users who are coming. Um, Whenever we did uh, we did those quizzes, we had to have them programmed. So if anybody has, you know, something that yeah, that would make that easier, uh, let yeah, us. Yeah, there's so many uh, poll tools that are free. Uh, you know, we as we get um, more and more, as there's more and more modules and free tools out there. Um, there's so many, uh, you know, you just, you demand that everything be free and super easy. <laughs> you can usually find things. Uh, so I, uh, Brandon is saying that they've used some quiz modules in Drupal. So I'll check those out. You know, the thing about, uh, for those of you who use these content management systems, whether it be WordPress or Drupal, that they're in Drupal, they're called modules, which means they're these contributed cool pieces of programming that let you put new features on your site and they're totally awesome and wonderful but there's millions and some are better than others and some will crash and cause problems with others that you already have uh, and, and then on WordPress they're called plugins and it's sort of the same principle so it's always nice to find out which ones are good and which ones are a pain and which ones uh, you know work with which uh, with which version of these things you have so um, it's really fun to geek out and share ideas. And so what I would love is if we could take this question into the Plea Connect online community and sort of say, who's done, who's found a good quiz module or good quiz plugin or good online website where you can do your own quizzes that people could link to and stuff. Um, and uh, maybe we can chat about it in there. It sounds like we could all look at the Educula Wow ones for an idea of how they could be done if you had them custom made, uh, but I'm kind of hoping I could figure out something so I don't have to have them custom made. Um, was there uh, now? Uh, we don't have tons of time. We do have a little bit of time. My clock is fast. So one of the other things that um, that someone earlier was saying they hoped that we could get into a little bit of detail are goals. Uh, goals. I mean, goals are always good to have in your life, of course. Ha ha ha. But in um, in Google Analytics. Uh, they are a specific way that you can sort of customize and set up your Google Analytics reports so that um, they can reflect the goals of your organization. Um, so, oh, I'm sorry, I'm just seeing a comment here about, uh, oh, from Brandon. Thank you very much. I'm going to definitely look into that. Uh, he's saying here the positive thing is if you have a Drupal site, you just need to spend time adding the quizzes and questions, and it's free. That's, the again, that great thing about um, 
using content management systems like Drupal and, and WordPress and others is that someone else has figured out how to build these little modules and plugins. And so once you install them, you're you know heading off to the races. Hopefully, you don't have to do too much uh, customization. So for, if you're not a developer or you don't have the money to keep calling your developer, hopefully there's lots of free tools if you if you use one of these systems. Um, so in the remaining uh, time, maybe, is it okay with folks if we do spend a little bit of time talking about goals and reports and things that you can get from Google Analytics? Um, I just was, it was indicated earlier that someone wanted to spend a little bit of time on that. So I, I did uh, give an incredibly high level example from, uh, from both my site that I set up and, uh, and from, uh, from Google itself. So according to Google, there's four types of goals. One is a destination goal. Those are really easy. So if you have a page that you really wish everybody would go to, like your email bullet and sign up page or your order order page to order publications or whatever it is, that's a really obvious thing to create a goal based on people going to that particular page. Um, and so that's very easy. And then you'll, you could give a monetary value to that. And a monetary value is not actually in the real world uh, has anything to do with money, but it does let you rank it in comparison. So if you have a site and the most important place you want people to go on that site is your publications page, you might give that you know, a $100 ranking and you might give another section of your site that's less important a $75 ranking and a $50 ranking. And then when you do your reports, you can kind of see in a way that quantifies value. It's just internal to you. Um, it would show you the ranking of one goal against another. Another one is duration, uh, which I find interesting. I wonder if other people have done that, that idea of quantifying your ideal length of a visit. So if you have a, you know, if you have a very content-rich area of your site and you can imagine it takes five minutes for someone to get the value of reading that page, you could set that as a goal. And if everyone is there, uh, if 99% of your users spend a minute on that page, you might need to redesign it. I mean, that's an example of a duration goal. Um, the other one would be how many pages have been loaded per visit. And that's an example of, like, in a particular section, how many layers down do you want them to go. Um, you can also do goals um, based on navigational funnels. And again, I have to teach myself this stuff because I'm not a Google Analytics expert, but when you go to your home page, let's say you've designed your page so that you want people to pick a legal topic and then a subtopic and then within that a sub-subtopic, and you want people to find your information in that particular way. And then with legal information, this can be important because people come to your page from all over Google, and sometimes they land like on some PDF without any context, or they land way inside a page. And so you can have a preferred way that you'd like them to journey through, and that can be set up as a goal with a particular funnel. And so you can say, I want them to go here, here, here. And if they do that in that order, that is a success to me given my goals for my site. And you can give... You can set that up in Google, and then you can see your report, and you can see how many percentage of users complete the goal that way. And then you can say, a year from now, I want that to go up. So a year from now, I want people to find that more easily, or I want them to click that particular thing because I've redesigned it. So um, you know, you can track the particular improvement you have to a um, to another area. Now, I'm happy to show you my goals. <laughs> The goals that I've set up on, on Your Legal Rights, which is the site that I look after, but I'm also happier even to let somebody else uh, give us a tour of how they've done theirs. Any volunteers, or should I be the guinea pig here? Um, or is there anyone who wants to just type into the chat or speak on the phone about uh, whether they've used these or whether they have an interest? We could also brainstorm if one of you can think of, you know what I've always wanted to know? And then maybe between a bunch of us here, we can uh, sort out whether we could get you that answer from Google Analytics. These are all different things we could do in the remaining bit of time we have. Um, uh, I, I'll just mention, if you don't mind, if no, no. Like, you're back here again. Um, we've always, whenever we would meet uh, somebody who does analytics and stuff, we would always, you know, mention to them that your site, uh, your this tool is not adapted to content sites that is not, you know, that is not trying to sell something. Mm -hmm. uh, so those goals, as you mentioned, uh, I don't see any others than, than the ones you suggested, really, because uh, Google Analytics is really aimed towards, uh, uh, you know, uh, a site that sa sa sells or, or stuff like that. So uh, we've, in the past, used uh, 
if somebody prints the information, that would be a goal because then that means if they printed it, they got the information they wanted. Uh, mm -hmm. Length, uh, duration of visit, exactly as you said. Definitely we, we used that in the past. Um, but we've found that it's hard, it's really hard to find goals that make sense. And, and we've never had a really satisfactory answer from any of those specialists saying, okay, you should really do this or should really do that. Um, it, it's kind of sad, really. Well, I have a stupid question. What am I supposed to say? There's no stupid questions. There's just stupid facilitators or whatever. Ha, ha, ha. But uh, uh, my question is, how can you get, how can you measure that someone's printed? I mean, unless oh, you have uh, a specific print-friendly, do you have like a print-friendly internal web service that does the printing? Because if on how the old, old site, then we haven't re uh, reprogrammed the the, um, the goals on the new site. But on the old site, the print version uh, was uh, was a separate page. Oh so yes, we have that too. Okay, sorry. That's so, so that, that makes that's some easy goal to if anybody goes to the print version, uh, that means it's it's a, you know you put that as a goal. Right. Okay, actually, that's interesting. That's, that's a sign of actually a good visit. If if they share the information also, that means they find the information, you know, useful. Yeah, but and, again, and it falls. that's tricky because what I've noticed and what I've noticed that's frustrated me, it's always good even if we even if what we learn on this web lab is that we don't know enough, that's good. Um, but one of the things that frustrates me is I use third-party tools all over my site, and by that I mean I use MailChimp for my email bulletins, which are uh, in absolutely essential to to my everyday work. And I use, you know, Share This, which is like one of those little floating social media toolbars. Like I use all these third-party services that are kind of sitting inside my site. And of course, one of the primary focuses and goals of my work is to get people to leave my site and go check out somebody else's. So. Um, What's, tra what's difficult for me is I'm, I, I, can, I can't really I can't quantify an exit the way that I want, which means when someone leaves my site, it could mean that they are leaving because they thought it was useless, or they could be leaving by going into a link and leaving from there. So what that does, uh, the, one, the one way that my understanding, the one way that Google, and it's much more complicated to set up, but one of the things that Google can do is what's called an event. And if you see over on the screen here where it says an action is triggered, um, there's one thing you can do, and it takes a little more customization as I understand it, but you can set up your, uh, your site so that when something external happens, um, such as somebody leaving your site to go to Facebook or someone leaving your site to go to a social, make a social recommendation or tweet it or print it or whatever, or play a video, even if that video is from YouTube, you can set that up so that that gets quantified. And so when I tried to go and we have a little bit of that set up on your legal rights, so I can tell when they've visited an external link or they've downloaded something from somewhere else. I can get a little bit of information on that. But something I just discovered, um, and I don't really know if it's working that well yet, but I just discovered this new product that's sort of weird and free called Google Analytics on steroids. <laughs> Believe it or not, that's what it's called. And uh, it's this bit of code that you can stick on your site that replaces the tracking code that Google Analytics provides, and it um, supposedly lets you measure events really, really well. And when I say events, I don't mean like conferences and things like in-person events. I mean events happening on your site as, uh, of this kind that, that we've mentioned earlier. So um, I was kind of, I didn't find the documentation very easy to understand. So then I found this site called Site Apps, which, um, allows you to put a piece of code on your site called from site apps and then you can install different apps very easily and so anyway one of the big things i was trying to figure out was when we have all our webinars on our site and they're all from vimeo which is kind of like a youtube type service but it allows for longer um, video and i couldn't figure out how many plays that was getting on my site without me leaving so i put this google uh Google, sorry it's called google analytics and steroids app through siteapps.com, and I put that on there, and now I am, in my report, the, the next day, I am getting um, information on how many people have played the video and how many people have completed it. So it's like it was very, very easy and free, and I'm getting a little bit of extra information that I didn't have the day before. So again, I, d I looked everywhere on the internet for reviews of this product and whether it was good or not, and I didn't find much, but it seems to be working a little bit better, so perhaps we could also 
uh, share ideas in um, in uh, in the okay. in the yeah, I'm pretty connected about that because I sort of thought, hey, that's kind of crazy. So uh, I'll uh, I could even show you how it all works if you're interested. But I uh, it has tons of quote unquote apps. It has like a little quiz. It has like a feedback flap that you can put on every page. It also has a thing you can install so that that Google Translate bar sits on top of your site so people can make your site Chinese or Arabic at sort of click of a button. So it has lots of external apps that you can integrate into your site, but much more easily than um, it's like you just click the app and hit install and it just does it for you. So again, I'm not sure if it's maintained, if it's up to date, but it seems to show a lot of promise. So I sort of was one, I don't, I'm, I'm reluctant to recommend things until I've used them longer, but um, I would uh, I would encourage the, the techie people and the people who are interested in telling their techie people what to do about that, because I sort of thought that is kind of cool. And the, again, the, uh, the product that I've been using here is called Google Analytics on steroids, which is kind of funny. And uh, I'll just type that in as well. But that does help you know more about when people are opening external things through your site. Um, but I'm gonna, again, I'm going to keep playing with that and try and get some more information. Um, but the goals that I have on my site, and again, uh, I, I, I'm uh, happy to hear from other people, but I have a goal based on the type of content. So I have any time someone's clicked on a resource page, I have that as a goal, any common question page. So I have set up goals for various areas of my site. I've set up a goal for my email bulletin. I've set up goals for the page not found, uh, my sort of that page that I have that says sorry. That page doesn't exist. I have a Google, uh, sorry, I have a goal for that, so I want that number to be low. <laughs> um, and uh, so I, uh, that, that helps me sort of track my broken links a little bit. Um, and again, I'm sure there's lots more exciting things I could be doing, but at the very least, I do that with my goals so that I know um, my, uh, I know the, the various areas of my site and how popular they are. But I do want to thank everybody for coming, and I do want to, um, not go over because you have given us an hour of your brains and we uh, we want to respect your schedule and your time. Um, I'm just going to my thank you screen, so sorry to fly through all this. But uh, if you have not done so, please sign up at Plea Connect so we can keep up to date on this topic and others. And I was going to say sign up to find out about future events. I'm not exactly sure uh, which and how future events will take place because the uh, original project that had the six webinars and web labs is is now complete because this is our last one. Now we are attempting to get more funding to do more in the future. I'm confident that we'll find some money to keep doing this great project. So don't give up, stay in touch, and we will definitely let you know if we're able to do uh, webinars and web labs in the future. Um, and please keep in touch in any of the hundreds and millions of ways you can keep in touch with me and with all of the people uh, involved in Plea Connect. Um, if you have extra questions or comments, um, by all means, um, you know, I will stay here on the line a little bit to see if I can be of any help to anybody. But uh, again, thank you to Nate for sharing. Thank you to Hubert and to all the attendees for sharing your questions and concerns. We are recording this event, so um, we will definitely – I'll be going back and checking out that uh, survey tool and the Poll Everywhere tool and uh, experimenting with those. So I'll be watching the recording of this very webinar. Uh, to, to remind myself about how to do all this stuff. So once again, on behalf of the, the Plea Connect team, I want to thank you for your participation in this and all the webinars and web labs so far. And you're about to have a survey pop up, and I would hope that you would take a moment to fill it in and let us know how we could improve and uh, what you got out of today and what you wish you could have gotten out of today. Don't be shy. And uh, without further ado, uh, I think I'll be signing off, and uh, hopefully we'll see you next time. And Hopefully we'll all be helping each other on the Plea Connect website. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.